In this video, we're going to find the notion of the span of a set of vectors. So if we have a set of vectors, v1, v2, up to vn, we define the span of those vectors to be the set of all possible linear combinations of the vectors v1 up to vp there. Uh, vp, that should probably be a vn. That's a typo there, sorry. So we take, all the, take the combination of all the vectors, and then we call that the span of the things. And in particular, as these vectors v1 up to vn live inside of fm, the span is going to be a subset of fm. And we call this the subset span by v1, v2 up to vn, right? And this is denoted as span of these things. And we're, the, 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 this idea of span is going to be much more important. It's going to be very important in the future, right? And which case, we'll talk a lot about the geometric consequences of what we mean by span. But for the moment, just accept that the span is the set of linear combinations. So we could ask whether b belongs to the span of some vectors, a1, a2, up to an. Now, asking if b is inside the span is the same thing as asking, is b a linear combination of a1, a2, up to an? And as we've seen in previous examples, determining whether b is a linear combination or not comes down to solving this vector equation. So if you're asked, is b in the span of these vectors, then that means you have to solve this vector equation. Let's look at some examples. So given, uh, the, we'll work over the real numbers here. So given the vectors a1, which is 1, negative 2, negative 5, and a2, which is 2, 5, 6, is the vector 7, 4, negative 3 in the span of these two vectors? That just means is, you know, is, is the equation x1, a1, plus x2, a2, equal b, is this, system, is this equation consistent? That's really what we're trying to do here. And this equation is, is, can be solved using this augmented matrix, where the first column is a1, the second column is a2, and the last column is b. Uh, putting your pivot position in the 1, 1 position, uh, to go down, you're going to have to take row 2, my, uh, plus actually 2 times row 1, and row 3 plus 5 times row 1. So we're going to get a 2, a 4, a 14. We're going to get a 5, a 10, and a 35. Those will combine together to give us this matrix right here. Then uh, I noticed that in the second column, or second row, excuse me, everything's divisible by 9. So we're going to divide everything by 9 in the second one there. And also this one, everything's divisible by 2. Well, it is by 2, but I meant by 16. We're still going to divide everything by 16 in the third row. Uh, that brings us down here to this matrix where our pivot's in the 2, 2 position. Uh, you'll notice that row 2 and row 3 are identical with each other. So when I take row 3 minus row 2, you'll get a row of zeros. Um, no contradiction, though. Consistency appears to be the case. Um, and I'll note, I want to point out to you here that we have this row of zeros, but this system has a unique solution. You'll notice that there is a pivot in every single column. And this is a misconception students sometimes have. They think that when you get a row of zeros, that means you have a free variable. Nuh uh, no, sir. You get a free variable if you have a non pivot column, uh, which we don't actually have that here. The row of zero actually has no effect to it, right? It's like saying, okay, x has to equal 3, y has to equal 2, and the sky is blue. It doesn't matter. It has nothing to do with what we're trying to consider right now. And you, sure enough, you can see here when you solve this system, it's in, we're now in row reduced echelon form. We see that when x1 equals 3 and x2 equals 2, we'll have a solution to the system of equations right here. Therefore, the vector b is a linear combination of a1 and a3. It is, in fact, inside the span. And the evidence is here. If you take three times the first vector and two times the second vector, those will add up to be b. And just to verify that, right, the first vector was 1, negative 2, negative 5. The second vector was 2, 5, 6. If you take 3 times 1, that's a 3. 2 times 2 is a 4. 3 plus, two, three plus 4 is 7. 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6. 2 times 5 is a 10. 10 minus 6 is a 4. And then lastly, 3 times negative 5 is a negative 15. 2 times 6 is a 12. 12 take away 15 is a negative 3. We, in fact, proved it here. We had a unique solution. And so, yes, the answer here is yes, B is inside the span of these vectors A1 and A2. It just comes down to checking. To be inside the span means that you're a linear combination of said vectors. And that comes down to solving the associated linear system. 
Uh, let's do another example of this. Again, we'll work over the real numbers in this situation. Uh, we have two vectors, a1, which is given as 1, negative 2, 3. a2 is given as 5, negative, which is, which a2 is 5, negative 13, and 3. And then b is negative 3, 8, and 1. Is b inside the span of these things? Same basic idea here. Uh, let's see, set a1 as the first column, a2 as the second column, b as the augmented, as the augmented column. Uh, your first pivot will be in the 1, 1 position. So we'll take row 2 plus 2 times row 1. Row 3 will be, you'll subtract from it 3 times row 1. So we get 2, 10, negative 6. Uh, we're also going to get negative 3, negative 15, plus 9. The second row will become 0, negative 3, and 2. The third row will become 0, negative 18, and 10. Uh, now, in this situation, your pivot will move to the 2, 2 position. Um, I'm okay with the negative 3 in the pivot position there. We have to get rid of the negative 18 below it, which as 18 is a multiple of 3, I'm especially thrilled about that. We'll take R3, uh, and then we're going to subtract from it 6 times R2. So that's going to give you positive 18 and negative 12. When you row reduce that last one, you're going to get 0, 0, negative 2. Now, in this example, you will see that the last row gives us a contradiction. And since we get a contradiction, right, this is saying since like basically zero equals negative two. We're not working mod two, we're working over the real numbers. This is a contradiction. So we have inconsistency here. If this linear system is inconsistent, that means that B is not inside the span. Consistency means you're in the span, you are a linear combination. Inconsistency means you're not in the span, you're not a linear combination. And that's all there is to determining whether a vector is a combination of others, whether it's inside the span of others. You can connect this vector equation to a system of linear equations, and the solution of said linear equations will help you determine uh, whether you're inside the span or not. Uh, that'll bring us to the end of section 2.1. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you feel like you learned anything, feel free to hit the like button. Uh, feel free to subscribe if you want to hear more about these videos in the future. Uh, other than that, I will see you next time. Feel free to post questions in the comments below if you have any, and I'll see you in section 2.2. Bye, everyone.